So Kara, we just looked at this recent 2024 JAMA article, which argued that there is no mortality benefit to taking multivitamins. What were some of the issues we found with this article? First of all, how did it get into JAMA? <laughs> I do not know. I do not know. I mean, at a, I, at a glance, there's this awesome database of 320,000 people. Uh, but then when you look a little closer, you see that there's three different distinct cohorts with their own surveys, their own survey design, their own time points, uh, and the questions don't match up. So we really don't know, ultimately, if these people are da daily multivitamin users. In fact, I think that there's probably a decent chunk of them that are actually not. One of the cohorts included B vitamins as a multivitamin. So it's just the data are really, really dirty. So they pull this, they attempt to harmonize these, um, you know, these really different surveys into something that they can then analyze. And then they pull death data at two different time points. So in the first time point, they saw this really itty bitty negligible significant increased risk in mortality of like 4%. And then at the second time point, they saw nothing significant. And I think the baseline data are dirty enough where this shouldn't have even gotten published and we can't draw any conclusions. No, yeah, I definitely agree. And in thinking about these studies or studies on multivitamins, are, are there any that you are excited about that you think show promise? So one that comes to mind that I think is pretty cool, in fact, they just published a follow-up in 2024, is the COSMO study. Um, this was a large study of over 20,000 people, but they looked specifically at cognitive benefits using a multivitamin in a subgroup of I think about 5,000, actually over 5,000 people. So they did this battery of cognitive testing at baseline and then they and then they followed up in this subgroup and they showed a clear benefit in those using the multivitamin. And the multivitamin incidentally was a centrum. Um, it wasn't a multivitamin that I would ever prescribe. I don't consider it a really high quality or very bioavailable multivitamin, but they were still able to demonstrate over this two year time period, improvement in global cognition and episodic memory. Those two um, components were uh, better than the control group who didn't receive a multivitamin. And so I think this argues in favor for this little, you know, micro exposure to some nutrients, you know, and uh, it was certainly conducted uh, more robustly than the first epidemiological study that we've just talked about, which shouldn't have gotten into JAMA. Okay. And what about, so with this Cosmo study, we're basically, uh, not taking much from the JAMA study, but what about your clinical practice? Like in terms yeah. of just your clinical experience and right. yeah, what you know or feel to be true in terms of what you prescribe. Do you prescribe a multivitamin? Do you take one or, or what are your, what's your thinking around those? So in my practice, I use multivitamins once in a while, like in my family, you know, I've got my daughter taking a multivitamin to kind of just make up the difference for her picky eating phase that she's currently in. I like individualized nutrient prescriptions. So, you know, we do a lot of testing, we figure out what somebody needs exactly. And then we prescribe that to them. Uh, sometimes I use multivitamins, but in general, I would say I'm going more individualized than that, but I don't argue, you know, with a well prescribed multivitamin. It's a little bit of a safety net to ensure we get what we need to. And I think, you know, beyond the cosmos, there's, you know, there, there have been other studies over the years that show benefit for using a multivitamin. Perfect. Thanks for your thoughts, Kara.